Well, anyway, thank you everyone for being here. What a fun night after an amazing couple of weeks that yes. uh, we've all had. What a boost the FASD community has had because of Rossi's um, creativity and uh, just being out there talking about FASD on TV. It's it, I know it's been um, really, really exciting for everybody and especially for a lot of young people with FASD who have never seen somebody with FASD on TV before, Rossi, you know, it, it's a big deal. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, lots of education, uh, education on television. Yeah, well. yeah. So speaking of people with FASD who are here with us too, we also have Rossi's, this, you know, the, we're here to hear all about Rossi's experience, but we also have Rachel here with us who's going to help uh, ask some questions yes. that people from the FASD community have um, been sending in over the last couple of weeks. Right. Rachel, do you want to ask the first question? Yes, I can. So the first one, uh, where did you get your, uh, where did you first get interested in makeup? I'm so sorry, I can't <laughs> very well. Um, I first got interested in makeup when I was six and I basically stole all my sister's makeup and um, <laughs> just put it all over my face. That was when I first got interested. Um, and then I started doing jobs when I was 16. So it was like practicing on myself. And then doing lots of yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next one. What was it like studying makeup at college? Um, studying, I would say it was lots of fun, but it was also quite difficult because I was surrounded by the uh, early part, early part of my like learning. I was surrounded by a lot of like neurotypical people and and people who teach, the teachers didn't understand FASD, so it was quite hard to, you know, learn mm -hmm. um, in a specific way. But when it came to like, I went to the Brit School, um, I started to settle in there and really, you know, get down on like what makeup was and how I could do makeup at that school. And then that's when it really started to, like be fun and like mm. it was more open so that i it's it's double-edged sword it was it was tricky to learn in the beginning because no one understood but then as i got you know made people more aware it was easier yes i'm kind of okay we have heard you see colors differently how on earth are you able to do the colors elements to your work Someone didn't spell write this correctly. Just putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. Um, <laughs> I I am colorblind, so I see tones different from how everyone else is see it. Um, but I think that kind of adds to my makeup. I think it makes it a bit. It adds a bit of a difference because oftentimes people will look at my makeup and be like, oh, I wouldn't have thought to put that tone with that tone, but you did, and it certainly looks interesting. <laughs> um, so I think that would, uh, I think it's uh, kind of the fun part of me is exactly use it as an ability, not an ability. So it's not a difficulty, it's an ability. Yes. I'm I'm going to just show a quick little video here that you made um, when we start to talk about what it was uh, like to be on the show. And you had uh, kindly given us a couple of videos. So here's the first one that we're going to hopefully bring up. I think I'm so driven to speak about FASD on such a large platform because growing up, I never heard anyone talk about it to me or any shows that I was watching. I never even realized it was a thing and because I never saw it, I could never relate it to myself. So I really wanted to be that person for other kids with FASD 
and to show them that just because they have FASD does not mean it's a barrier. It means that in some forms, it's a possibility to think outside the box and to go wild and crazy and, and really reach for the stars and um, use it as an ability, not a disability. I just think that's so awesome. And, and yeah. you know, now that you've been on the show, do you feel like you did that? I think I certainly brought awareness to it. I think I educated as many people. Um, I could possibly ask, like, ask to educate. I, I told my story and I made people more aware of it. I made lots of people question what what maybe could have happened to their child which i think is really beneficial i, I think that opens up more conversation about awareness um so yeah i think i've achieved my goal of bringing awareness to it and more so it wasn't ever not the whole point the whole point of me being on the show was to show my artistry but also the reason why i'm like this is because of my fasd and and how i think outside the box is because of my differability um so yeah i think it's kind of fun to show people that it's not always um did out. i tell you that i was at a meeting the other, just two days ago no yesterday and the woman who i never met before she is from a, a group that supports autistic people and she said do you know what? One of my favorite shows, and she, I've never met her before, I'm right, going to meet it. And she said, one of my favorite shows is Glow Up. And there's this young man on Glow Up who has FASD. Did you know? Yeah. That? And I mean, people are talking about it because of what you did. It's, it's just amazing. It's just oh, amazing. So, Rachel, there's another question there. Do you want to go to the next question? Yes. So, why did you want to go on the show? That was the video we just saw. So the question underneath oh, it is. I didn't see that. <laughs> okay. What was it like to get two ding dongs on the show? Oh. Um, I think I was really underwhelmed, to be honest. I was a bit like hesitant when I got the, the ding dongs. The first one, I was just like, whoa, this is insane. I can't believe it. And then my mental health started to slip and I felt bad for getting the ding dong and and being around people who I thought were my friends in a competition setting, you know, people's personalities change. And so it was quite hard to gauge what was real and what wasn't, what was for the cameras and what wasn't. Um, and if I'm honest, getting the second one was like, oh my God, like I got a second one. And in the second episode, it, you see me say, I've got what it takes to win. Um, but I did genuinely, it was almost affirming when I got the second one, but it did, I remember when I got that ding dong, I was so like anxious about it. Like I was like the most anxious ever because I was oh, wow. like, I'm like the only person getting them and I feel bad. So, um, <laughs> It was just, you know, an interesting uh, learning curve to a lot of my growth in the show. It's all about um, imposter syndrome and, you know, thinking you're not worth it and, and, you know, being aware that it's not, you know, always sunshines and rainbows and that you can have a really hard time sometimes behind the camera. So, um, yeah, it was, it is what it is. Um, and um, I think overall very grateful for getting them but uh yeah it was just, it was very mentally draining well yeah. why don't we show people some of these designs maybe uh we've got a little video that shows and these are ones you can explain after how it worked a little bit but these aren't the ones that people might have seen on tv because these are the home well you can talk about how it worked so these are you did these before you went on the show is that right yeah, so these are um, little practices I did of each look um, that I showcased on the show at home. And 
basically I was like I don't want to practice I don't need to practice and then mum came along and was like no think about it again we need to practice um no but um <laughs> yeah I was forced to practice and I'm very glad that I was because I, I stand by each look I think they're really cool oh they were definitely good <laughs> definitely uh, someone asked, did you ever feel like your FASD put you at a disadvantage on the show? Um, I wouldn't say disadvantage. I think cast and crew were very um, aware of my FASD and they made sure to make allowances for my difficulty and my disability and the cast, they all knew why I had someone come in during the face-off, not the face-off, the creative briefs and give me timings. Um, and I was allowed certain things that others weren't allowed just because it's it would have been very difficult if I weren't allowed those things. Um, so no, I don't think I was at a disadvantage because of my FASD. I think if anything, I was advantageous if that's worth. Um I think I was at an advantage because I had my difficulty and, and they were so um what's it called? Uh, uh, like they give you space to like Accommodate. accommodating. Is that right? Yeah. They were so accommodating the the cast, the the crew. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rossi, how did you do your makeup so good on Glow Up? Oh gosh, um, lots and lots of practice, and um, they cut out this thing that Dom said once, but he did say in the second episode, you know, I bet you practiced this a ton of times. And I did. I, I, the the second look with the reverse face, I practiced that at least four times. Um, practice makes perfect. That is the truest saying ever. And um, yeah, I really tried to hammer that look down specifically because it was so poignant to what, you know, how I see the world and how FSD, you know, shows itself. So that is how I... <laughs> I got so good at makeup. Um, it, it wasn't overnight and it, it took a lot of practice. And even to begin with, like um, in my, I guess, career, I, 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 it's all about confidence and, and knowing that you may not be the best at the moment, but in the future, it will be better. But what would you say to it? I think that question came from a nine year old with FASD or it was from a very young person. So do you think when you, you know, what do you wish somebody said to you when you were nine years old, when you started playing with makeup and? Um, um, I was lucky enough with the family that I've got that it was very um, accommodating again, loving that <laughs> word. Um, that I was allowed to basically, I'd just say, have any mother like mine um, <laughs> and grow up where I grew up. Um, but yeah, to be excited every day and not to be ashamed and don't be embarrassed, even when the haters are hating, don't be embarrassed because there's something to be proud of, something that you're quirky and cool at that they're not cool at. <laughs> so yeah. Um, about someone, Go ahead. Someone said, do you do makeup for a living and do you practice on your mum? <laughs> I do makeup for a living. It's my job. Um, I'm a freelance hair and makeup artist. It's what they call a session stylist. So I do lots of photos, photo shoots. Um, and no, I don't practice on my mum because she's a builder and she doesn't like makeup. So I don't know how I came to be. But um, <laughs> yes, I. this is my job. My life. Yeah. You do practice with anybody else. Anyone else but my mother, yeah. Going to play another little video clip from you. I am so thankful for the opportunity of being able to show FASD in a, a whole new light and, and, and really show how it affects me and my experience. 
Ooh, like me again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have another question. If you feel like a meltdown was coming while you were filming, what did you do? Ooh. Um, I had, towards the end, I had a lot of meltdowns behind the scenes. So at six, um, when I got a black model, I was so, like, I we were told who our models were when we were standing, waiting to go into the room. And um, I remember seeing that my model was black and I was like, oh my gosh, like the first thing in my head was like, I've got to get the skin match correct, hence spending 20 minutes on it. Um, and that was kind of like a, like a like a physical, like body meltdown where I was like, my, like hot and sweaty and like really clammy and getting really stressed. And um, what I would do in that situation Hindsight's 2020. I would probably go out for a walk and be like, production needs to stop. I need to go and go for a walk. If you, want, <laughs> if you want the best scenes, I need to go for a walk. I should have taken myself out for five minutes. Um or if you if I would ever like have a meltdown, it would always be after filming. So on the first episode, um we came back from the shoot. And um, I basically just cried in bed. I thought I was going home mm. because the way they filmed that episode was over four days. And um, it was cut into multiple different days for different reasons, just because of scheduling. But the way they filmed that one episode has always been that way for the entire production. So um, it basically means everyone has a longer time to be used to it. So at the end of those four days filming, I was like completely like, I'm going home, I'm over it. Like, this is like, I can't, I'm so stressed. And I think, yeah, I just, if I'm real, I did have a meltdown, a really big one. Um, and so what I did was just sleep it off, basically. I just like mm -hmm. some meditation and slept it off. Like, sometimes the only thing you can do really isn't it yeah literally <laughs> you don't want to burden anyone else with your problems well it just feels like all overwhelming like i just mm. felt like i just needed to go to bed and um, start a new day yeah take them sleeping pills and just go to sleep <laughs> and just reset the day so that's what we did it was mm. fine yeah. right Okay, do you have any advice for a nine-year-old struggling with meltdowns? And just regulation. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm I... sorry. <laughs> um, meltdowns and dysregulation are very common. And first of all, I what would want you to know that it's not just you that's having it, it's even you know, 22 year olds. Um I'd say, you know, take yourself to a corner and be like, this is okay. <laughs> Meditation and sleep help. Guys, I didn't meditate. Um, <laughs> I would say, take yourself to one side, watch your favorite TV show, or do something that is creative or productive, if you like academics, why? But you could do some quizzes or something. I don't know what academic people do. Um, so yeah, you could do that. That's mm -hmm. what I would say. If you were struggling, if distraction is a really good technique. Um, mm -hmm. that's what I always use anyway. That's what I use for filming. Yes, yes. same here. Yeah. <laughs> right. Can you organize yourself and manage your time? My daughter is 14 and doesn't cope with change, noise, or any mm -hmm. of the often mentioned if that's the right word mm -hmm, yeah, uh, my question is was this you years ago did you grow to adapt or did your FASD present difficulty I am <laughs> exactly the same as your daughter um I cannot organize myself and manage time to save my life I'm getting better with age um but as um Everyone will know with FASD, we're all um, mentally a few years behind what our actual, you know, physical age is. So it takes 
the right community of people. It takes a village to raise a child. Um, and to be honest, it, you need an outside brain. You need a PA. That's what I find. Um, my mum acts as my PA on set and um, for any jobs. So she'll help me organise. She, she will basically be like, I'll give her the times and the dates and she'll organise my travel and when I need to be there and tell me when to organise my makeup kit and 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 uh, give me the money for the food and tell me where to get the foods or you know what time to get food. I basically organise my day and then I go and do my job. So it's, it's not, you know, sunshine and rainbows. It's uh, really, um, you need... Well, it is if you get... If you know what you're doing, you're great. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so I do need that little bit of extra help. So, yeah, she comes and helps me have a PA. <laughs> so um, okay. I'm not... For you... You're not having... Not, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm yours. Your daughter can't have my PA. Um, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, um, I remember being 14, and I was exactly the same still, and have struggled with those parts of life as well um I did grow and adapt and I still am growing and adapting adapting all the time um and FASD presents in a more um socially difficult way when you're older so instead mm -hmm. of it being oh it's okay they're just a bit different it's oh they're acting weird like why are they why can't they do this um, so it's it's not people saying that, it's how people perceive you, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just having the right people again in your corner to um, help you navigate this neurotypical world that wasn't built for neurodiversity. You know what I found really interesting, I'm just going to jump in for a second. We had, and you probably saw them, there were lots of comments out there in social media um, after the second episode where people with FASD who were watching, including some of the young ones, mm. they said that they could start to see that you were getting nervous. Mm. And they were seeing things that maybe I wasn't even seeing. I thought that was really fascinating. And it made me think about how important it is that there's... Um, Representation. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, very... a lot of, I guess you'd say fans. I, I wouldn't say... Um, I'd say fans of the show wouldn't recognise it because they'd never seen difficulty, uh, disability or neurodivergence like FASD, autism, Asperger's, ADHD has been on the show. People with physical disabilities have been on the show. Stephanie in season one had um, a walking disability um, and Saffron was, you know, neurodiverse and um, so was Bernie. On multiple seasons, there's been representation, which is all too brilliant. But for FASD, there's never been that. Um, there's never been that. So it's really important, I think, that kids with FASD yeah. see, you know, young adults on TV and see them struggle. I think that was really beneficial in the second episode. I think um, you could even tell in the third episode... I was so tired. I was just so, mm -hmm. the way I was talking about, you know, speaking to the model, I was just being honest. I was just being honest. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens with people with FASD when they get tired, they, they're they just themselves. They don't have any barriers. They just speak from the heart. And mm -hmm. I'm glad how people with FASD are seeing that because that shows them that it's um, not abnormal and it's completely okay. Yeah, even I noticed it when I was watching you. I was like, it feels like you needed your time away from the model and just take a debrief with yourself. Yeah. I just like, yeah, I can, I can see the f kind of maybe like the fear in your eyes, kind of like, I don't want to mess this up. Um, I'm not used to different complexions. I'm only, but yeah, I could definitely see the, the fear. <laughs> yeah. The fear was paramount in that moment. I think when it, it, it came to the complexion side, I, I think it's because I put so much pressure on myself that mm. I had done it before, that I, now I was on TV, I was doing it again. I was like, this has to be the perfect complexion. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. it was good that you people with FASD saw it. 
because it was makes it awareness and it did just it just shows how tired the brain gets to be honest so yeah exactly right we've got another question what service or support has been the most helpful to you not counting family and friends oh service uh butlers um uh where have i got help from i uh probably when i was young as a lot of kids with um fasd have um gender dysphoria I had gender dysphoria as a child and thought I wanted to be a female um but just didn't know I was a fabulous gay man um so I went to a gender clinic well, uh, the Tavistock clinic in London and that was the first place where I was kind of like really kind of had um I guess therapy in a way like it was kind of like a, a form of therapy where I was talking about my issues or the reason why I was there so services I'd say therapy in general um yeah support worker I've always had a support worker of some sort um I've also had salt sessions for the past like six years of my life which if anyone isn't sure about what that is, um, SALT um, is social and speech and language therapy. So it's basically helps a person neurodiverse to understand social cues and how to deal with real life, <coughs> which um, those I find have changed my life probably the most. So those are the services I'd say. I just wanted to um, answer a few of these things in the comments. In the comments, but, yeah. What boosts your confidence, self-belief? My son really struggles to believe in his strengths. His face when you first mentioned FSD on the show, it was beyond his imagination that someone could be on the show like that. Thank you. Wow, you're very welcome, Jules. <laughs> um, and my confidence is boosted. I, I, I get lots of serotonin, I guess, and enjoyment from um the just like others with FASD the um positive. positive vibes we're just sailing on positive vibes um and the affirming rituals of others so you know how people talk about what I've done and you know the positives and also um oh thank you Leila um that is how I get my confidence really is from um, how I view my work and how I feel about a certain situation and the main thing that I could say to anyone really especially um, your son is find something that he's passionate about and to when he's feeling a bit down in the dumps um, to kind of get him to do some of that thing that he loves because it really does recenter really the whole um, you know, the way you think. It really helps to um, bring yourself towards yourself, if that makes sense. Way too loved that they are watching <laughs> I wouldn't oh, say, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm a celebrity, Geraldine. Thank you very How much. Much you are. Just, just for a mm -hmm. second, Rossi, just take a second and absorb that comment and some of the other ones coming in. You know, there are young people out there right now who are watching you and and you know when you were little did you you didn't have a chance to see somebody like you on tv then and i just just take a moment and you did that you got yourself onto the show and you did that by training up for all those years on makeup and becoming as excellent as you are and that's just the the tip of the iceberg for people out there who um have been you know watching you and your your journey Rachel should we maybe why don't we switch now because we have a, a, a little bit of questions about you know what's next and um, first I want to show the video from you Rossi where you're talking about how it's um, if I can find the videos again on here here we go um, that going home isn't the end right this I is want everyone to know that just because I went home doesn't mean you know 
it's the end, you know, it's the, it's, it's the be all and end all. I don't, I don't see it like that at all. I think that this is just an opportunity for me to continue and, and show FASD brilliance in a whole new light to bring awareness to FASD and, and show what it means to have FASD and be a creative in the industry. And I don't want any of you guys watching at home to be let down um, by me going home. This isn't the end, it's just the beginning. And it's just the beginning. It is just the beginning. I, I um, was really sad when I left the show, obviously, um, and, and disappointed in myself. I was so happy for Jess that she made it like forward and, and she's going to continue to smash it. Um, and, but then you start to self-reflect and I think being aware that failure isn't failure. It's just, um, a part of your journey that makes you a better artist, a better human, adds string to your bow. Um, raises awareness to other people. So I was really gutted to begin with, but now I'm just like, this is just a part of my story, to be honest. How did you explain FASD to your peers at school? Um, hi, Kirby. Awesome name, by the way, great name. Um, I, at school, I would always be like, I'd just get them with the real funny facts. I'd be like, yeah, I've only got half a brain, like that. <laughs> and they'd be like, how are you alive? And I'm like, it's the secret, it's magic. Um, but I'd be like, yeah, it's FASD. I, I would always, you know, tell them FASD and fetal alcohol disorder and, and walk them through it and basically like, tell them what to expect from the friendship that was oncoming. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, 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 that's how I basically did it. I, I uh, sometimes when it came to college, I sat down my year, like not year group, but my class in particular, we had um, my peer group and we just talked them through FASD and what to expect, to be honest, because um, when you've never heard of it, it can be a bit crazy. daunting. Yes, it can be a bit um, wild to be in the same classroom as someone with FASD when you've never um, experienced okay. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I just I have to jump in and say, though, that it, that people with FASD have a full brain, they don't have half a brain, um, just in case anybody watching is <laughs> taking <it out. laughs> Yes, everyone, everyone with this is different. I'm just a very particular breed. It's <laughs> <laughs> the whole brain. There's just been a few little connections that have gone wrong, correct? A few yes, wires. A Imogen H. I think you're truly amazing. I also love you too. My mum's good too. Do you want, I'll put the image in one of here's Imogen's question. Age so 10, what age did you start doing makeup? Yeah, so I started when I was uh, six playing with my sister's makeup. And then I started going to courses when I was 13 at Pinewood Studios. Um, this brilliant company called Creative Media Skills. They, um, back in, back in day, not so much anymore, but um, they used to run really cool like hair and makeup courses. So I learned a lot there and that gave me the like qualities of like a professional makeup artist. And then I started professionally working when I was 16 um, to do like weddings. And I did that wedding when I was 16. Um, don't apply to wedding jobs on Indeed and lie and say you're 18. Okay guys, just don't do it. Um, but that's what I did. Um, and it does help calm me down. It uh, recenters me again, not finding their brilliance. I think that's what my mother really did find brilliance about me. So I was um, really helped me focus. Hi, Rossi, just wanted to say, especially. Uh, I'm just, I'm just I'm gonna myself. Show you that. Yeah, yeah. That's Jovi. Honestly, um, you, I, 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 to be honest, I still handle it very differently from you know how normal neurotypical people would but when I'm really like in my head about things I just have to like take a step back and be like you're being a bit silly here like you just have to talk to yourself basically and just like 
if you run your own business like that's insane like you have to think like when it comes down to like for an example I was really worried about social media from the show and and how I would be perceived on social media and how maybe I wouldn't be as popular with followers or people liking my posts but then you have to bring reality back into it and say if I had 1,300 people in a room that would be insanely like huge amount of people or with your business if you were to tell your younger self that you run your own business now Mm -hmm. um how amazed you would be um so I think it's bringing you know current day amazingness and talking to the the little you basically and that's that is one of the main things that I do is like Rossi if you would tell tell your 13 year old self that you were doing this now you were being an advocate for your disability and bringing awareness to it through your career. Yeah, the what, the singing. Yeah, talking to yourself. Yeah, I talk to myself a lot. So, um, yeah, it's you just you know focus on the the positives always and and think about it in hindsight. It's a good way. So this question was the time pressure difficult. As soon as I add time pressure for my son, it all starts to go wrong. Um, you know what? The one thing I didn't struggle with was the time pressure. Um, in the show, I thrive on stress. I don't know what it is. Well, I think this question is everything is there. Okay. Yeah. So basically, earlier on in the 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 this, um, we organised with the producers that I would have a PA on set, whether that was my mum or whether that was someone else. It wasn't me, was but it there. wasn't mum. It was someone they hired from the already existing team, the lovely Danny who auditioned me for the show, um, ended up being my PA and what an amazing woman. She basically just kept me on my toes and um, reminded me of times. So no, when it comes to time pressure, I was lucky enough to have someone who was my outside brain to be like, this is the time, this is how much time you've got left. And even in a challenge, so for the sixth episode, uh, the last episode, um, I, even though the time pressure was mounting, um, it was focusing me in a way because it was like mm-hmm. and, like a like a way of uh, because of the time pressure, I knew I only had that specific amount of time if that makes sense. So I would um, I would just get on with it. Um, so yeah, hello Rossi, please never give up. You're amazing. You're an inspiration. Oh. Well, oh, sending all the love, Layla. You're my inspiration to carry on. Um, yes, so that's what I would say for the time. Yes. Right, righty tighty then. So, would you, what would be your dream as an outcome of being on Glow Up, both on a personal level and for FASD? The outcome. Um, personal level, my dream. I was doing. I recently started doing um, lives on my one of my social media accounts, TikTok, and bringing awareness to FSD through that, and do my makeup and talk to people. Um, and a lot of the time, people ask that question, like, "What's your dream?" And um, <laughs> I would say to teach others with neurodiversity, FASD, autism, physical disabilities, a tremor, you know, um, you know, people, yeah, anything, anything. Teaching disabled people to be makeup artists and then hiring those same students to work for me um, on projects. I think that's, that is, that is my dream. That is what I want to do with my life. And, um, I think the goal from being from Glow Up, like coming out of Glow Up, I think I just wanted to make people aware of what FASD was. And even if you don't have FASD, but you have a different disability, um, that it's an ability, not a difference. So to not hold yourself in a different light from other people. That's one thing I learned from the show that everyone, cast and crew were like, just because you've got this disability doesn't mean you can't do it. And um, yeah, truly amazing. Uh, yeah, hashtag find their brilliant. So. 
Yep. No. no. Oh. Have a uh, the video. The, he basically just said what he says in the video. So let's skip that one. Rachel, okay. and go to the next question. Um. You. I hope this is on here. You mentioned a course you've done for people with FASD to do makeup. How can people access it? So, um, yes, I, um, hi, Georgia. Um, I have done a course for other kids with FASD. Um, Joe's daughter, Lissy, was a part of it. And we basically went through all of the, the um, thank you, Georgia. Yeah. And Caitlin, um, great, great fun, everyone who joined in. Um, and basically, um, you can either DM me on Instagram, or if you haven't got Instagram and you're a parent um, who is interested for your child, get in contact uh, via Road to FASD or my mum, or Job Jan, um, on Facebook, um, and basically just show that you're interested and, and we'd love to have you on board. Uh, we're running a new um, course this summer, so it's going to be lots of fun and we're just going to go through all the basics of makeup. Um, and for those wondering if it's like crazy amounts of people, I like to keep it five and below so that everyone basically each session has, um, you know, personal time with me basically. I want everyone to learn in a, like a family environment almost, family and friends type vibe. I, I wouldn't want it to be any other way. So yeah, that's how you'd get involved. And, and I hope to hear from all of you. Can't wait to have you all part of the team. Yeah. <laughs> Okie dokie. What are you most proud of in your glow up experience? What am I most proud of? Um, meeting Al and Dom, I think, and all the guest judges, um, and showing my um, history, I think, through my art. <coughs> um, yeah, I'd say that is what I'm most proud of, I think, showing my disability through my artwork and um, yeah, that's what I'd say. Okay, that's all the questions I have then. Ooh. We have another one last uh, video, which I just loved. And it was your message again, tell the young people with FASD watching tonight, you know, this is, we know an hour is a long time, but we also knew there were gonna be a lot of questions from people. So we're really happy that you guys have all um, kept with it. But Rossi, maybe I'll, I'll play this one last video and then you can, if you have any other message for the young people watching, we can end with that, maybe. Oh, I hope I inspire you to go out there and strive for excellence and find your own brilliant because everyone has their own journey and this is mine that I'm on and I am so happy with the journey. Um, but I wanted to come on and, you know, be real with you guys and let you know that it's not always perfect and stuff happens behind the scenes but they happen for a reason so with that i hope you enjoy the rest of the series and i will see you soon bye so yeah that was <laughs> that i think that kind of puts it all in a night, yeah, nice really little amazing. bow and just like um yeah ability not disability i'd say um Joe saying that the course should be called Ding Dong with Rossi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Any other questions? Yes. Well, I just think Rossi and um, you know, you're surrounded here with on screen with people who are your fans. And I think every single person um who has seen you on Glow Up or who has um, been watching tonight, you know, we're all learning as we're going and we're all helping each other grow and learn as we're doing it and um i you know we're all i'm a mom to an almost 20 year old with fasd who's been watching your journey and looking after your dog and <laughs> we're all it, it, i i think the um i'm not being very eloquent right now because i'm tired too and if i'm tired i'm sure everybody <laughs> tired. but yeah, the idea is that you you have touched so many people and um, have really helped to change the way that people look at this. And I said to you, I was really honored to be invited for the premiere night when you had a group of people watching that together. 
yeah. near your home. And I said to you, I don't know if you remember, but I said to you that I think that you'd, you've reached more people um, and in a different way than certainly I've managed in the time that I've been working for National FASD. You know, you've, you've got a great reach right now. And the thing is that you do it, like how you did that, any of the images that you did, but that second one, how you even thought of that, I have no idea. If you stuck me oh, in a room for a hundred years, I would not have come up with that. And it just showed so well, along with the words that you said that night, because you said you can't have the positive without the negative. And that really touched me. And I'm sure it touched a lot of other people out there. Yeah. Um, but that's the whole message, you know. You can't have uh, an easy life 24 seven. It's, you know, not fun that way. You gotta have difficulty. And also, yeah, if you can't, if you don't know about it, how are we gonna make any change? Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's all about bringing awareness to it and, and making sure that you as a person can bring awareness and, and spread positive joy I guess through art I, that's the only the way I can like mesh it together and what I love about the two of you you and your mom you're a, you're a team and <laughs> you, you know that we've been hearing from people who they see what you've thought what you've accomplished and they don't necessarily see a way they don't know how you did it. And that's why some of these questions are, well, you know, was this happening to you too? Or is this, and, and I think what you've made a choice to focus on the positive while still respecting the negative, because you can't ignore the negative or otherwise things go really wrong, don't they? Um, if you don't deal with it. But there's, there's, there's always a negative, but, I want everyone. I, yeah, I, I want everyone watching to know that don't focus on it. Like it's it's a part of your life, and and it's never going to change. And be proud of the fact that you're different, and don't be ashamed or upset or angry. God forbid. It is. It's the way the gods have intervened and given you this difference for a reason um and try and use your your own brilliance to spread awareness and and do what you can perfect way to end the show i want to thank you so much rachel thank you for for coming on and helping um be the voice of all those people out there who sent in questions and to the two joes and to jan and um, Sharon, who I know is back there somewhere, you know, thank you all too. It takes a village, uh, as Rossi said earlier, but Rossi, um, you know, ding dong. Y all. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you guys. Bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs>